How's it going, everybody? This is International Master Daniel Wrench. This is Chess.com's YouTube channel. And this, yep, you guessed it, baby. It's another live session. It's coming at you live uh, right here. We've uh, we've been bringing you the action for beginners, all these uh, notation and how to set up a chessboard videos. And you know what? We decided the people deserve a live sessions. The people deserve what they want. And we're going to give them what they want. Here we have a classical French with the bishop e7 variation, c6, certainly not the most common move there. Um, nor is even bishop takes f6 being played that often these days. Uh, one of the main reasons is that strategically this position is already um, very dangerous for black because white gets very easy attacking chances, casting along very quickly and developing an attack on the queen side. Um, and in this position, my opponent has actually opened up the possibility for this check. So whether it's even a great idea to give that check or not, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I'm going to be destroying his right to castle, uh, assuming that c6 and knight d7 are probably not theoretically accurate because of these exact reasons. You see this is also a very weak square um, just in general. I'll go ahead and cackle long. Um, fearing no man on the queen side and uh, now I'd like to try to develop an initiative before my king gets safe. Oftentimes players um, aren't quite sure how to approach a position when their opponent's king is in the center. Well how you do it is you open things up baby as quickly as possible. Um, but in this case I'll also have pretty easy attacking chance on the king side even after he moves his king back and over so I could also try to drive the h-pawn right now. I have a minute and 49 seconds he has two minutes and 30 seconds so Though we like my position, um, not exactly sure how to continue. I can also play this move queen f4, and if he moves the king, I can access the d6 square. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and drive this h-pawn, as I said, and um, take my chances in the fact that, uh, if anything, the, the time he's lost having to put his king on that safe square because of his blunder of allowing me to put a piece on d6 should, if anything, make my attacking chances a little bit easier. So rather than sitting there trying to beat my head against a wall of forcing the center open, um, obviously d5 was not a possibility. He just had too much protection. Um, I decided that I would just develop the attack on the king side, anticipating that um, even if he put his king on f8 or g8, he would still be in trouble. And I think I was right to make that decision. Um, now the question is, should I recapture my pawn back right away or just play h6 and open it up a little bit further? Um, both seem like good possibilities to me. I will capture here, though, um, because I don't see any reason uh, not to. I also liked the fact that it opened up the threat of queen f4. He plays knight f6. I'll go ahead and play h6. Uh, still just opening up things on the king side. Pretty simple. Um, now I have the opportunity of taking here and then giving check on h7 and then taking f6 and my queen gets into h6. So that looks good, right? Um, I also have this idea of knight h7 check, and if he takes it with the knight, I can play queen takes h6, game over. Ooh, I like it. Right? Yeah, we like it, yeah? Right. Um, I believe the game is actually over. And uh, you just got privy to a uh, awesome, I think it's a Cockney accent I'm working on, not really an Australian or um, an English, certainly not a Welsh accent. Just a little bit of uh, right, yeah. Okay, and there... Um, anyway, I don't know what I'm doing, actually. Please don't make any comments about it. Um, what I uh, do know is that I just dominated my opponent in a classical French where he unfortunately grossly misplayed the uh, the opening. Um, we're going to bring this one to you anyway because I'm going to back it up and highlight the positional and tactical errors that my opponent made. So um, the fact that I won quickly, though may, maybe it didn't make for the most exciting match, uh, can still make for an educational experience, and my opponent has indeed just resigned, which allows us to uh, review it, as we said we would. So here we see a French. Um, I, I prefer the knight to c3 move order in the French, uh, offering options for my opponent for both the winnower and the classical. After he played knight f6, bishop g5, of course, the other variation of the classical is to put the bishop on e7 right away, which would allow e5, and, and the theory develops into a more standard French uh, French structure. Um, not really the topic of this lecture to do a French uh, theory uh, lecture, but you can see that we already we already discussed um, how to play the French, the basics here in our uh, chess openings playlist. So you can go ahead and check that out if you're curious. Um, but my opponent played the d takes e4 classical up to this point. This is still completely standard and perfectly playable. Uh, the bishop move unpins the knight on f6, so tactically white has to deal with this, which is why white takes f6. Typically with the bishop, as in this case, the knight tends to be the more valuable piece um, post in the center. And, and in most cases, white can develop this other knight to f3, this bishop to d3, and um, develop into a rather... Um, 
a rather solid center and potentially use the, the bishop on this diagonal as well with both knights accessing the kingside squares uh, for a kingside attack. It's one of the typical ideas. Um, and because of the dangers potentially on the kingside, g takes f6 is probably theoretically um, more popular, though these days these lines um, aren't really being played at the highest level, whether it's g takes f6 or bishop takes f6. But in any case, this line, though it doubles the pawns, the idea is that these pawns actually control a lot of the critical center squares. And uh, after a move like knight to c6, sorry, knight to f3, c6, um, there's bishop to c4 even, and, and, and moves like queen to c7 and knight to d7 is a pretty solid position for black, and perhaps that's the development my opponent had in mind um, when he played this position and simply forgot the fact that he played bishop takes f6, because after knight f3, this whole idea doesn't make nearly as much sense anymore. Black typically needs to bring the knight to d7 and, and try to open up the, the position with c5 as quickly as possible. Opening up lines for the bishop is is definitely in his best uh, best interest. So playing a moves like c6 um, and, uh, of course, following it with knight to d7 was, was a horrific blunder. Um, at first, I, I, I couldn't believe my eyes, so that's why I didn't play this move instantly. Um, but probably even, even Castle's Long, followed by the Pawn Storm that I actually conducted in the game, was probably good enough for an advantage because I still don't think c6 was a very good move, um, even, it, even if it wasn't for this check, which is obviously good. So I played this check, and then... Uh, immediately retreated the knight, the sole purpose of which, of course, was to take away my opponent's right to castle. And now, um, even if there isn't some sort of concrete way and brilliant way to blow up in the center and checkmate this guy, the fact is that he still has no safer area for the bo of the of the board for his king than the king side, and the fact that he's lost so much time is only going to allow me to develop this pawn storm. That's exactly what I did. Um, I think at this point, black has probably already lost. Threats of h6 are pretty, are pretty powerful. Um... You know, if he makes some sort of like whatever bluffing kind of move, I think even even h6 followed by just capturing here and, and bringing the queen up into the dark squares is probably kind of irritating for black. Um, and of course, I can continue to drive drive the pawns this way too, as as uh, white is probably well ahead in terms of the race for the kings. Uh, black isn't really playing with a full deck there, unfortunately. Um, so my opponent played h6 to stop it, which makes sense, but again, his loss of time was just not enough to make up, um, make up, his, his loss of time was just too much for the king to deal with. And so uh, once my pawns get rolling, this position is already over, and uh, knight h7 was a nice way to finish it off. Again, if you were missing the climax, the idea is that I'm sacrificing this knight as a clearance sacrifice, opening up the queen here. Um, it's a clearance sacrifice to open up this diagonal, which will end in a forced checkmate. Um, and, of course, not taking that knight actually wouldn't really help matters because I'm still bringing the queen in, and uh, the game is still over. So, um, interesting little struggle. Uh, learn your lessons if you're a, an aspiring French player. Um, this should highlight for you why it's important to understand uh, theory, you know, at least to a certain extent. Not not to develop, but just sort of ideas that maybe look solid in one line, um, maybe not so good in another another variation. And in this case, I think my opponent was sort of confused in the opening and blundered away this knight to d6 check, after which... Uh, White's attack was pretty much unstoppable. So anyway, there you go. It's another exciting live sessions for Hugh on uh, Chess.com's YouTube channel, and uh, hopefully we're going to see you around on the uh, on the main site on the main mothership. So talk to you soon, big guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you around on Chess.com.